Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Connor from Futures Analytica. This is a continuation of the Plarity ETI series where I'm trading the last hour of the day and giving you guys a repeatable, consistent example of how to use this strategy during this time. This time of day is often referred to as power hour and that is for a reason. We often see an uptick in volatility compared to the previous three to four hours of the day and you see a comparable market movement to when the market just opened. So if you're on the Pacific coast like me and you don't really wanna wake up early in the morning, this is another great time to trade. Now I want you guys to take a look at the chart. It's quite obvious the market is in a trending mode. You're gonna see that Delta and price are very highly correlated and there's very little choppy movement. Because of that, we've left the strategy in trend mode and we're turning it on arm both, which is the most basic level of the strategy. We essentially have enabled it and now it's filled us into a short trade. When you're using the arm both mode or either any of the individual arm buttons and not auto arm, the strategy automatically turns itself off to avoid any false trades, any trades you don't wanna make. So here we turn the strategy back on into the same mode it was on before by clicking arm both. That means that once this trade either fills or gets stopped out, the strategy is going to continue looking for another trade. So because Delta has remained consistent with price, we're not gonna change anything and continue having the strategy enabled. And right here, we end up getting a really, really nice fill on that short position that we had. And I want you guys to see here, we have the strategy in trend mode, price has moved down, but we actually get a long fill. This is a perfect example of the strategy's self-selective nature. On a lot of other strategies, like let's say a moving average cross strategy, you're gonna get lots of lag. Like here, you would it would be almost impossible to get a long fill in a scenario with a moving average cross strategy. But for this one, we actually get a very, very precise and calculated long entry when we get that triple stack imbalance, regardless of any previous price action. When the strategy is in arm both mode, it doesn't take into account price action. It only goes off of order flow data. If you want to take into account price action, you can use the auto arm button, which does take into account price action and gets you breakout and regressive trades. Although you're going to get less trades than if you were using the arm both button. All right. And here is our second fill of the day, giving us a total profit for the day at $1,100. Here we actually make kind of a big mistake. As you can see, Delta and price have maintained consistency. And as I'm trying to click arm both, I accidentally click regression and then I click arm both after that, meaning I get filled into the wrong type of position. After I do that, I click the reverse button to invert my position and go in the intended direction, which was long. This is an issue that I've heard some of you guys have. These buttons are a little bit small. So what we've done to fix this is that we've added the ability to use key binds for each of the individual buttons, meaning you're not gonna fat finger and click the wrong button anymore. You can set it to whatever you want and you can do it in a manner that is a lot faster. As you can see, when we click that reverse button, it actually disabled our current strategy. Unfortunately, this is a limitation with Ninja Trader. It's the reason why we have the close button on the actual polarity strategy, that if you open any position manually, it's gonna disable any strategies you guys have loaded on the chart. The update that I just referenced will be pushed around next week, and it'll also include a couple of other improvements to the general usage of the strategy. We got another trading session on the next day lined up here, so don't click off the video yet. Anyway, that was a pretty solid day, three consecutive winning trades in a row, giving us a total profit of about $1,500 after commissions. Your total profit and the total number of trades that you take during the last hour are gonna be less than if you traded, let's say, the market open, because the volatility is gonna last a little bit longer when you do so. But there is still a ton of opportunity during this last hour of trading. All right, you guys, moving on to the next trading day. This session is on the 3rd of January. Market was closed on the 2nd and as well as obviously on the 31st. The one prior was recorded on the 30th of December, which was on a Friday. So these were, rep were back to back. Anyway, you're gonna notice here is that we got a lot of chop over there, but we've seen kind of a return to a more trend-based price movement. You can notice this by seeing the correlation between Delta and price and how that has found a high correlation in the previous four to five bars. Because of this, we are in trend mode and we are in arm both, like always. Like I said in my last video, 
during the last hour of the market, you're gonna see price track either the green or blue line a lot of the time. So it's likely that we're going to get a long trade here, especially because of that automatically marked red line that polarity has added. All right, and here is that first fill of the day, getting us into a long trade like we had said earlier. Now, I don't want you guys to take that as me trying to tell you that I'm predicting something. The direction that the strategy is gonna go in has absolutely no relevance to the outcome of the trade. So don't think I'm trying to pull a fast one for you because these voice lines are recorded after the trading day. Anyway, here we are arm both for a little bit in trend mode, but how we actually end up disabling it before the trade is filled. This is actually because we want to give some time in between these two trades. See, we're actually right in between, in the middle point between the green and blue reverse strength lines. Here, that means that it's kind of deciding in between being a choppy market and being a trending market. So we want to let some price discovery occur before we make any decisions. As you can see, we got filled on that trade and we're going to be waiting just a little bit before we turn on the strategy in either direction. However, that ends up not making a difference and you'll see why in just a second. You're gonna see here that I'm gonna measure from the highest point on the previous leg of this price action to the amount of where we're gonna enter. That basically means, do I want to get a trade to try and capture a choppy amount of action to the top of this bar, or do I wanna wait and try and capture any kind of regressive action? You're gonna see here that we are armed long only, meaning we are gonna try and do that, but once price passes the red line, that means it's gonna be impossible for us to get a winning trade after it passes that line if we get filled into a long trade there. Kind of complicated, but once it does that and we don't get a fill, we end up switching to regression mode and arming both, meaning we're trying to find some regressive action to follow that green line. We're not looking for a breakout here. Remember, it's the last hour of the day and it's been very choppy before. I know that's kind of a lot to take in, but I hope that explanation makes sense. Feel free to rewind and rewatch that part of the video a couple of times to see what I'm saying. And you can see here, right as price goes above that red line, we switch into regression mode and click arm both. This is kind of a more advanced move. You actually could have just left it in arm both in regression mode that entire time and you would have gotten the exact same fill. You didn't need to do any of that complicated long moves, but I try and I scalp as much as possible as I can from the market with all the knowledge I have. Now, I don't expect you guys to be able to do the exact same thing, but if you're able to, that's a good little tip on how to do so. Anyway, as you can see, we got filled into a short position. You can see our stop loss is placed right above the previous high, which is exactly where we want it to be. We would have adjusted it if it was a little bit low to give us the highest possible chance of getting this trade to be filled. But as I said before, we're all good right now. Anyway, this trade ends up playing out in a pretty predictable fashion. You're gonna see there exactly what I meant before by capturing a move up to the previous high. There, if, we, if the price had been above that red line and we had gotten into a long trade, there was no chance of us getting filled unless there was a breakout. And we just don't have the delta necessary to get that kind of breakout. So just to recap, price moved up to the previous high and now is moving down to continue this channel that has been formed before. We're probably gonna see price move all the way down to the previous red line, but we're ending it right after this fill here. This is gonna look pretty intimidating if you haven't traded this style before, but I promise you once you start getting hands-on and really looking at the market in this way, it's all gonna click really fast. Anyway, we ended out finishing the day there at $1,100. This isn't necessarily a stellar amount of profit, but for the time spent we traded, it's actually pretty great. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video. I really appreciate the support you've been giving me, and I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season with your families. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys super soon.